Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel, Tell Samira. I wanted to follow up. I don't know if you all got a chance to watch. I was on Evelyn Parham's channel and we were talking about how to deal with toxic people. Something came up for Evelyn, so we had to cut it off. So, but I wanted to follow up with you all because I guess we can consider this sort of like a part two because I want to talk about different types of uh, toxic people and I'm also going to talk about how to deal with those type of people. So bear with me because some of these things you may have heard but I'm going to give my own personal stories my own take on it how I do it so I'm going to try to um, personalize it for me and then it also may be some things you haven't heard let me know what you think down in the comment section don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with other friends so one type of toxic person we know is the person that likes to give the silent treatment now this person is so messy because they won't usually won't even tell you what you've done to them to upset them and then all of a sudden you know you all talking and you're eating and whatever that you're doing all kind of stuff together then all of a sudden they don't want to eat with you they won't say anything and then you try to engage them in any type of conversation they're just like mm turning, rolling their head, you know, and sometimes you haven't even done anything. Have you noticed that before? This is a great manipulation tactic. Like some people, they intentionally go silent on you to try to punish you because they know you want to feel connected to them and have this relationship with them. And so apparently you did something, even if it was really nothing, but let's say they just want to control you and you didn't allow them to control you. And so of course, they're not just going to come out and say, Hey, I'm toxic as hell. And I wanted to control you and you didn't listen so now I'm playing this silly game with you and I'm not going to talk to you they're not going to do that so they just go silent on you what I've learned with these type of people it used to bother me because I wanted to be accepted I wanted to be liked and if you say you didn't maybe you're lying maybe you're telling the truth I don't know but if you're watching this channel I'm sure you can relate but anyway the way to deal with these people is is to play that, that game right back with them they're not talking to you don't talk to them you may say so myra but i don't want to be childish so what give it the mirror giving back to these people what they're giving to you because that's the best way to win this game because they want you to feel a way they want you to be upset they want you to be mad they want you to come begging to them oh but why what changed what did i do that gives them power so then now they know that you're vulnerable and you want to be liked and accepted now they can play different games with you and some of them will try to act like they weren't even doing Doing anything you know and then if you show them that you are that you are so pressed for them to give you some type of validation just by talking to you they're gonna continue to up the games that they're playing with you because they're like hmm I can just stream this person along any type of way I want to and you don't want them to win with you like that so hey they're not talking to you don't talk to them don't even ask them because another grown person now if it's a kid maybe you would try to have a conversation to, to model for them proper communication but a, a, an adult they should already have these skills and if they don't they should have got a self-help book or gone to YouTube so baby that ain't on you to train these people so hey they know what they're doing. They don't want to have a conversation with you. Ignore them. Don't even look at them. Go ahead about your business because that's the best way to win this game, to be very much unconcerned about these people. And if they want to continue to play the game and they never talk to you again, so be it. Let them do what they want to do. And I'm sure it can be harder if you're living with this person. This person is a spouse. But I'm assuming in that case, they'll break the silence first and then they'll start talking. But I tell you this, if I'm living in a house with somebody and they go silent on me, whatever benefits I used to give them, I wouldn't be giving those benefits anymore. Because if you want to be silent, we're going to play this game to the fullest. If, if this is, let's say, um, if I had an aunt or something living with me and this person decides to punish me, because that's what it is. If I go on silent, if I used to take this person somewhere and do that, oh, I ain't taking this person nowhere until they have a conversation. I ain't going to even tell them. I'm going to get up 10 minutes early before it's time for to take them and I'm going to get up and leave because who's going to be who going to win this the messiest game? I'm going to win it because I ain't started, but I'm going to finish it. Or if I used to pay this bill for this person or something, I ain't paying it because if we're going to be silent, we're going to be silent on everything, not just silent because you punishing me. We're going to be, everything going to be silent in that relationship. Whatever benefit, if I used to go get your clothes, dry clean for you, that's going to stop too. Whatever benefits you were getting from me about to stop because we're going to be silent on, over everything, okay? Because that's how you're going to win that. Also, now, this one I want to proceed with caution. Because I'm not saying, if you have a friend that's in an abusive relationship, that that abuse 
person is toxic, but their life is toxic. What I mean by that, because they could be with somebody who is not only um, emotionally abusive, calling them out their names and things, threatening them, but could also be physically abusive. And what you don't want is somebody that um, is getting you in these predicaments where her, let's say if you're a man and um, you, you got to... Um, a friend and his woman is beating him up and she starts like shooting at him and throwing bottles of stuff at him and you happen to get hit by the bottle you know you may not have the best health insurance so why you want to put yourself in a situation with that glass shattering your eye and you can't go to work and get your money because his girl just went off on him and she thinks you involved in whatever he doing, even if you innocent. And now she trying to do different stuff. She shoot him, you get grazed in your cheek. You ain't got time for that type of life. I hope you don't. And that's what I mean by the toxic. And the thing is, if you try to take the gun from her to try to protect him, he may turn on you and start beating you up because that's somehow, sometimes how these toxic, um, these domestic violence, toxic relationships can, can be. You know, that the person that's being abused, once you try to help them, they may flip on you, and I'm not saying that that's everybody, but why do you want to be in that situation? I can't tell you the countless times that I call myself trying to um, be, be supportive of somebody who was in a relationship like that. And then they turn around and they may get mad at you or they may tell, you may confide in that person like, oh, you should leave, you're better than this. You don't deserve this, um, you know, leave, 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 leave. And then she may go and tell her man once they on pillow talk, oh, Samira so said that I should leave and I can do better. And then now he want to go crazy and when he see me, he want to smack me up and pimp slap me and to make me shut up. Uh-uh. I ain't got time for that. What I'm saying is you can be a friend to your friend from a distance. Let, hey, I love you, but the situation you're in right now, I just can't be around that for my own safety, my own mental health. Give this person, you know, let them know, hey, if you want some referrals, you can text me for domestic violence shelters or domestic violence counseling or whatever like that. You can always do that. And you can even have boundaries, even if you don't want the person to come to you, if they flee and they come to your house. No, because sometimes that danger can come to you. And little Ray Ray or little Timmy, whoever it is, come after you, banging your door, shooting up your place, out there crouching like a tiger waiting to shoot you, you know, um, because they know that, that their person is with you and now they're blaming you. Because it's all your fault that now their love, which was really domestic violence all along, is all your fault. Now they out there after you, you know, with the Mac to your back. You don't want to live like that. Your friend can have resources of domestic violence centers who can help and go to the police and they can direct them there. They ain't got to come to your house with that. So I'm saying they, your friend may not be toxic, but your friend's boo seems to be toxic. So save yourself from that. The angry friend, another kind of toxic friend, this angry person, whatever y'all go, this person has found going off on somebody. They going off on their mama, their daddy, their kids, people in the grocery store. You go to the park, they going off on the people there. They don't like the way people pushing their kids on the swings. Make no friendships with an angry man or an angry woman. Why? Because that drama is going to come to you. You're going to find yourself always trying to save this person from a fight. From a gunfight, you're going to have to pull If you roll, rolling with a gun, you're going to have to pull that out to help your friend because somebody going to be trying to shoot your friend because your friend always angry, popping off at the mouth, going off, setting all kind of drama all around for no particular reason at all. And you know, you, and you know your friend crazy. You, you, you seen that most of the time it's your friend fault. And you probably tried to tell your friend, hey, don't be so crazy. Don't be so ghetto. Stop turning it up so much. They not going to listen because that's just who they are in the inside. The best way to deal with an angry friend is if you can, it's not to deal with that person at all. You know, cut back if you can. If you still want to celebrate their birthdays or holidays or whatever, send them a text, call them for a few minutes. And you won't just have to, like, ghost this person, but you can let them know what's up. Like, hey, we had this conversation about you going off on public, and you be doing that, and that's cool because that's on you, but it ain't good for me. I, I 
I can't do that. I wonder about my safety when I'm with you. So what? Let them call you names and punks and scared and cowards, yellow belly, whatever they're calling people these days. Days. Let them call you that, but at least at the end of the day, you're going to be safe. And you can tell that person, like, hey, when we go out, you be doing too much, but I am going to send you a happy birthday song um, via Messenger, you know, on the audio app. Or I am going to send you a text or call you and talk to you a few minutes, but what we not going to do is go out in public. But I love you. And if you happen to change their ways, we can go out sometime and hang out together in public. But if you don't, that's still fine, too, because I don't want to... Put, push my own desires off on you, but I got to love you from a distance. That's how you deal with that angry person because you always going to have to rescue this person. Another type of toxic person. I'm at number three. I don't know how many I'm going. I just wanted to say number three. Ah, the friend who never understands you. Oh my goodness. This one is so, ooh draining you know this person they net what you try to tell them something they always confused they need you to tell them again they don't understand why you think this way they don't understand why you feel this way and some of that is manipulation because you look at it you like this person graduated from high school and even if they didn't this person graduated from eighth grade which is enough to have some understanding about things okay you know you're like this person there's no developmental delay I talked to their mom and their dad and they said nobody dropped them on the head as a, tod a toddler or a baby. So you understand that all the stuff in the brain or whatever it's called, people that smart, you know, should be working and firing well. What is it? The nerves and stuff should be communicating well and there shouldn't be any cognitive deficits with this person. So why can they not understand you? The thing is, I'm happy you all asked me, you all. Thank you for participating. They do understand you. It's just a joke. They playing with you. They want to make you feel there's something wrong with you. That you knew a little, um, you're a little off. Oh, something wrong with you. You know, they want to cause you to question yourself. Am I thinking the right way? Am I feeling the right way? Is something wrong with me? No, there's nothing wrong with you. Well, maybe if a lot of people keep telling you there's something wrong with you, I mean, a whole bunch of people, then maybe you want to look at that particular trait people are telling you about. But if this is just this friend they never seem to get it, and then especially you talk to another friend, another person, and you're like, oh, my friend didn't get it, but I'm telling you, and you seem to understand, and that other person's like, well, what is it not to understand? Because A, you know, A, then B, then C, you know, or one, two, and three. Uh, what didn't your friend get, you know? And chances are that's just the wrong friend, you know? And what more can you say to this friend? You've already told this friend, like, why do you never understand me? You know, do, do you notice that? Like, you never understand me? Like, why do you think you never understand? Like, what is the issue that you don't understand? People like that, it's always good. And a lot of these answers is always going to be low contact, maybe texting this person or even decided that maybe this isn't the best relationship for me. Because if you can't understand me and communication is a problem, apparently you need a new friend. Because why would I be around somebody I don't communicate with? You might as well be talking to somebody that's talking a different language. Guys. If you have not got in my books, uh, you want signed copies, you can hit me up, email me at tellsamira123 at gmail. Again, tellsamira123 at gmail to get signed copies of I Should Have Worn a Curtain by Samira Alexander 1, 1 and 2, available on Amazon or like I said, signed copies. Let me know. You can get these books. The reviews are coming in. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all you all who have subscribed to the channel, shared the video, and that have bought books. If you have purchased my books, please leave reviews on Amazon. It helps other readers know what to expect. And it also, I read them, so I do take that seriously. And it lets other people know if that is the book for them. Um, also, my first full-length novel, um, Road to Malevolence. Again, Samira Alexander, if you would like a signed copy of this hit me up um on email or you can get it directly from amazon whatever you like thank you so much again leave reviews 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 thank you so much i saw my elbow y'all look like i didn't put on enough shea butter today help me out all right let's see next so the time waster oh my goodness y'all y'all ever had that friend it's always a waste of time they make plans with you and then they don't follow up you know, I, and I don't like that. And somebody used to tell me, oh, Samira, you should say something to the people and follow up. I'm like, why am I following up? This person called me and said, Samira, let's go to the beach. 
Friday at this time. And so I'm expecting that to be the case, you know, but then you never hear back from the person at all. It's like, okay, they, I mean, nothing at all. Like, why do I need to call you and you don't want to set something up with me? I just don't operate like that. If I tell somebody I want to do something with them, I am going to set it up. And then I want to call that person to confirm like, hey, see you tomorrow at this day and time. Like we said, but some people don't do that. And then, and then they act like then the beach day has passed, right? And luckily you were smart enough not to even go to the beach, hopefully. But I know I wouldn't, you know, but anyway you know, then they come back to you like a week later and two weeks later wanting to plan something, but never acknowledge the beach. And it's like, no, how are you not going to acknowledge the beach? Why am I going to waste my time and set something up, else up with you and you don't even do it? Or this is the person, the time waster will have you on the phone for hours and hours talking about something. And as soon as you want a problem solved, guess what? They want to pop off the phone because they didn't want to um, try to problem solve. They just wanted to use you to vent. That is all that was. Or they'll make up all these different types of plans. Oh, we should do this. We should start a business. Or, oh, we should get together and put our money in this pot and do something. And you all start coming up with the plans and stuff and they never follow through. Okay, you like, okay, well, what happened? They said they were going to follow through. You start getting the business going and trying to get it working out. This person ain't nowhere there. All of a sudden, when you do talk to them and you say, well, hey, well, what happened? We were supposed to do this. I went and bought some of the stuff. I'm ready to go. We talked four hours on the phone. They're like, oh, you know, no, nah, I don't think I can do it. But, they, you know, it's like, well, why'd you waste my time for four hours? Then they come back months later, years later. Then they got some other little idea. They pulled out the little butt crack and they want to get you involved. But you know this person is very inconsistent and the thing is you have to be careful because people like this will just Totally waste your time, you know why give your time to this person on the phone all these hours and you know This person isn't about following up, you know You give them all these resources all these things to help and they just won't just tell you look I'm just full of crap and I just like to talk about stuff I never have any intentions of doing. If they told you that up front, you can say, oh, okay, Sarah, thanks for letting me know. Now I can take my time to see if I want to waste my time. And we can both just plan our dreams that we're never going to ever fulfill because we're both losers. We can, we can have that talk, but they don't tell you that. They just like to waste your time and keep coming around like it never happened because they're just hoping that you're stupid and going to keep spending all this time with them. And, I don't, you know, I don't know why people do this, but stuff like this, how to protect your time, is letting you can let them know, hey, what happened? Don't let them off the hook. Last time you said we were going to do this, you didn't follow through. What's going on? Is this a habit for you? I don't like this. You know, this is the last time. or We're not doing this again. You don't follow through. It's not okay to waste my time. You know, saying something to these people like, hey, don't just let, you know, keep letting them um, get away with this. Or also giving distance to people like that. Like, forget that. You know, because also I can see why people would distance themselves because people know what they're doing. They know good and well they wasted your time. And they could have come back to say, hey, you know, I changed my mind, whatever. I know you went to buy some stuff. I'm so sorry. I should have did better to let you know what I was thinking. They're not going to do that because they're professional time wasters. This is what they want to do. And they're comfortable living like that, you know. And then maybe they were just waiting to see if you were going to get everything going so they could leech off you and then come in when you start making money. Like, oh, that was my idea too, friend. That was my idea too. I'm so happy you took advantage of it. I know that's like 20 percent because i helped you and stuff you like what you mean you helped you disappear you these people are full of games y'all they full of games also another t um type of per toxic person for me is this person that only do stuff if they want to do it now of course you should have good boundaries and not always engaging in stuff you don't want to do but for me any type of relationship friendship or whatever is reciprocal sometimes i may not want to do something but if this person has been there for me i may do it just to um you know to satisfy this person i ain't gonna have to lie about it i'll be like you know i don't really care for that but i'm just doing it you know out of respect for you or i may see this movie that I really didn't want to see but I'm expecting us to both maybe do that kind of stuff you know 
But these kind of people, they're very adamant about, I only do stuff that I want to do. I don't put myself in uncomfortable situations and everybody should have that standard. But the thing is, if you, I think if you have a person around you like this, you may find yourself always bending to them because they never want to eat at the restaurant you choose. They never want to go to the movie you choose. If there's a party, they don't want to go to it, but they want to do something else and you end up going. And then you notice it's like, wow. You, you, you don't bend ever, but we always only doing what you want to do or you're never coming if I, if it's me. So stuff like that, I, I always look at it like, okay, we shouldn't be friends then, especially once you let this person know, Hey, I know, I noticed this. You say you don't do things you don't want to do. And I, okay, I hear that. But the thing is you never want to do anything I want to do. And I'm always just doing what you want to do. And I don't like that. And if that can't change, then I don't see us spending time with one another. Now, you may like talking to the person on the phone. Maybe you can keep talking to them on the phone, texting them, on, texting them, you know? But continuing to hang out with these people and they're only doing what they want to do just shows them to me that you don't value yourself and they're better than you and they're making all the choices and the plans. And uh, lastly, um, a person, let's see. The, oh, the jealous friend. This is the one you can tell the jealous friend. They're always comparing themselves to you. They may rejoice when something bad happens to you, even laughing in your face, that narcissistic smirk. I can't do it because I'm not a narcissist. But anywho, you all know what I mean. Um, they downplay your wins. You know, something happy, something happy you're big and happy about. They, they're like, oh, well, I did that in 1972, so it's not a big deal. You're kind of late with that. Or, you know, you promoting your business. They won't tell nobody else about it. They won't share your stuff on social media. You know, but when they got something, they want you to be all excited and ecstatic sharing their stuff, telling people it's their birthday, wishing their mom a happy birthday. You know, they want all these great things for you to do for them. But they don't do it when it comes to you, you know? And you can tell sometimes maybe you're walking past them and they give you a funny, evil kind of eye because really they don't like you. With jealousy, it's like a hate and a love type relationship. And it's like when you notice that these people, they always... um pointing out something wrong with you you know to me that's also can be a sign of jealousy you know nothing is ever good enough never right with you they always have to critique you about something you know and really telling you that like if you could be um the way they want you to be everything would just be okay these people with jealousy, you cannot win with these people because they will totally set you up for your businesses to fail, for you to fail in your different relationships, for your self-esteem, how you feel about yourself to fail. These people are totally not worth it. So you can choose to go no contact with these people or limited contact, just a text or occasional call for five or ten minutes. Do whatever works for you. But for me, I've just found that the jealous people is nobody I want to be around in my life. Thank you all for hanging in here so much again. Again, thank you again for getting me over to over a thousand subscribers we are about to reach soon our um the watch time so to get this channel monetized that is the goal and thank you all for helping me get there again like subscribe share this video also if you want to book a session with me you can do so through visibook the information is down in the comment section and it'll let you know the dates and time i have available and also um the fee that I charge for the sessions, uh, just to connect, talking about narcissism, toxic people, how to cope with that, how to move forward in your life, and just letting you um, ask, answering any questions you may have about that. So thank you so much for hanging out. Look forward to talking to you soon. Bye.